It is now time for oral questions, and I recognize the Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My first question is to the Premier. Yesterday, the Premier finally admitted what Ontario families, mayors, municipal councillors, medical professionals, and most of his caucus already knew that his plan for retroactive cuts to everything from public health to childcare to emergency services was reckless, irresponsible, and put families at risk. Yet the Premier still claims that he plans to make the same cuts uh, just next year. Why does the Premier think that the cuts that failed so dis disastrously this year are going to work better next year? Questions to the Premier. Uh, through, through you, Mr. Speaker. Our government was elected to clean up 15 years of mess that the opposition created, the Liberal government created. $347 billion. And just think, over the last 10 years, Mr. Speaker, they've doubled the debt. The NDP Shame. doubled the debt along with their partners, the Liberals. Yep. We were elected to Order. clean up the mess. And I'm glad to see the municipal partners that we spoke to yesterday, many mayors right across this province, acknowledge there's actually waste to be found. Exactly. There's tons of waste in federal, provincial, municipal governments. I know the NDP and the Liberals Order. haven't come to realize how much waste there is of taxpayers' money down here. We were elected to clean it up. We Response. look forward to working with our municipal partners. They have acknowledged that there's waste, and we're going to give them a little more runway. So it's a good news story. Yeah. The news story yesterday was a good news story. Uh, Order. Start the clock. Supplementary question. Well, for months, the Premier has stood in his place and denied the damage his budget was causing. Anyone who raised a legitimate concern was fear-mongering. Anyone who pointed to a serious problem was spreading false information. Now, even when he's been forced to admit he was wrong, it's unbelievable that the Premier is still planning to impose the same municipal cuts next year that failed this year. And if that's not the case, what other services to people is he planning to cut as part of his fiscal fantasy, Speaker? Questions to the Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, we, we listen to the municipalities, and we are a government that listens. We listen that they can save, they can save money. Yeah. They know there's a tremendous, a tremendous amount of waste in this government. Yeah. Not only that, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we're going to provide them $7.35 million to support them finding efficiencies. And actually, a lot of the mayors I spoke to are looking forward to taking advantage of the $7.35 million. We also providing $200 million we've committed to small rural municipalities to modernize services. I don't know what the opposition doesn't get. This can't go on. It just can't go on spending and spending and wasting taxpayers' money. We have to start respecting the taxpayers and every single dollar from the day we got elected till the, 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 the day of the next election. The, the day of the next election, we're going to watch every single penny that this government spends. The opposition has to come to order. Member for Waterloo must come to order. Final supplementary. I guess the Premier found out the hard way that emergency services, public health, and child care are not a waste of people's tax dollars, Speaker. They're, necess they're ne necessary services that people and families rely on. But the reality is that even as government the foreign government. government scrambles to do damage control, very little has changed. They're still moving ahead with cuts to municipal transit funding. They're still ramming through Bill 108, the biggest gift to developers that this province has ever seen, despite serious concerns from municipal leaders. And they're still planning to make the same cuts next Order. year that were a disaster this year. If the Premier actually listens to municipal leaders, what does he plan to do when, he, when they tell him they can't afford these cuts this year or next year, Speaker? Stop the clock. Stop the clock. The member for King Vaughan must come to order. The Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry must come to order. The member for Kitchener-Conestoga must come to order. Yes, you are. <laughs> Start the clock. Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition got a bang on. She said we're in damage control. We've been in damage control since June the 7th when we looked at the books. 
the damage that they created, the Liberals created. There's been so much damage in this province. I've never seen anything like it. Somebody's got but, to control You know, it. Mr. Speaker, when you talk to the small business owners and business owners right around this province, they're as happy as punch. When you talk to the average person, you go out there, you speak Position to them, they're as happy as punch that someone finally has the backbone to stand up to other governments to say we need to find efficiencies. And Mr. Speaker, as sure as I'm standing there, they're going to find efficiencies. Here, here. Because there's no one on this planet that doesn't believe there's one, two, three, four cents waste in any level of government. The only people that believe there's no waste are the NDP and Liberals because they created the waste. That's it. Here, here. Stop, stop. I know there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm in the House today, but I would ask the members to allow the person who has the floor, whether they're answer, asking a question or making a response, to make it without shouting at them. Start the clock. The next question, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is to the Premier, but I'll remind him that this June 7th is the anniversary of all of the damage this government's done for a year that people are already sick and tired of, Speaker. Very clearly. Yesterday, the Ford government revealed to Ontarians that their plans to rip up Ontario's contract with the beer store are going forward, and they're going to enter into yet another legal battle, Speaker, that is set to cost Ontario families hundreds and millions of dollars. Can the Premier provide an estimate of exactly how much Ontarians anticipate uh, paying, paying rather, to get out of this contract? Questions to the Premier. Mr. Speaker, we campaign on making sure we kept the promise to bring more choice and convenience to the people. And I, I don't know what the NDP, if they don't want to give the people choice yeah, or do they want they to keep that. it on one, one of the, the, the conglomerates, as I say, one of the multinational, international, global beer, beer companies, three of the largest in the world, control the market. It was a terrible deal. It was an absolute terrible deal that the Liberals put forward, a 10-year deal, I don't know who signs 10-year deals, to have a monopoly. And what, what, beer, what beer company, Mr. Speaker, what beer company would not want more distribution? What is the reason? This only happens anywhere in the world, it only happens in Ontario, that Three beer companies control the market. It's unheard of, absolutely unheard of. What is the reason the beer store— Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask the member for Niagara Falls to come to order, the member for Orléans to come to order. Supplementary question. Well, Speaker, beer is fine, but it's certainly not my priority, and certainly not for hundreds of millions of public dollars. But with only two weeks left in the legislature, the government is suddenly introducing legislation to, to force through a contract cancellation that could literally cost hundreds of millions of dollars and thousands of jobs. The government points to this bad deal, this particular bad deal signed by the Liberal government, but the Ford government happily maintains other bad Liberal deals like private hydro schemes yep. and private hospitals. Somehow a group of well-connected lobbyists has the Premier ready to spend hundreds of millions of dollars in public money to rip up this particular contract. So my question is, why is the issue of dissolving contracts with the beer store so urgent for this government? Premier, Minister of Finance. Turn to the Minister of Finance. Thank you, uh, Premier. You know, Speaker, this this is not just about beer and wine. This is not just about choice and convenience. This is about creating fairness for the people of Ontario. To be clear, Speaker, the government does not own the beer store as many people believe. It is owned by three global beer multinational corporations. Ken Hughes, our special advisor, stated that the Liberal sweetheart deal with these multinationals is the obstacle to us delivering on our commitment. Mr. Hughes states that it is a, quote, bad 
bad deal for all Ontarians that it, quote, stifles competitions, keeps prices artificially high, and prevents new Spons. craft beer entrepreneurs from getting a strong foothold in the market. Right. Speaker, the previous government put multinational profits ahead of our families. Final supplementary. Boy, boy. Speaker, what this is about is the Premier's priorities. Families in Ontario want excellent schools for their kids. They want health care that they can count on. But when they look to this Premier for leadership, Speaker, inside, the only forward. thing he's offering is beer. Stop the clock. I apologize to the Leader of the Opposition. The government side must come to order. The volume is, is growing progressively louder. I can barely hear the Leader of the Opposition. Start the clock. Leader of the Opposition. So when they look to this Premier and his priorities, all they see is somebody who's offering more beer. Really, Speaker? That's the priorities for Ontario families? The Premier is ready to lose 7,000 jobs and hundreds of millions of dollars inside, in a fight order. with the beer store, but he can't find funding for children with autism. What kind of priority is that, Speaker? How did the Premier lose any sense of Ontario's priorities? Government side, come to order. Minister of Finance to reply. Thank you. Well, it's obvious that the MB NDP do not understand that our parliamentary system gives us the tools to get out of these bad deals signed by previous governments. Our legislation ensures we can get the best possible deal. Consumers and taxpayers won't be held hostage by multinational companies. This sweetheart deal, Speaker, is a, ter quote, a terrible deal for Ontario consumers and small businesses. Left alone, it will continue the unfairness of the first of this system for the next six years. Speaker, you have to wonder why these multinationals supported by the NDP would be so opposed to selling their products in more convenience stores, more grocery stores, and big box stores. It's because the sweetheart deals with the Liberals is so lucrative Response. that they are choosing to ignore the economic opportunities before us, the 9,000 new jobs that create, it can be created, the $3.5 billion that will be added to our GDP. Thank you. Order. The next question. Once again, the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My final question uh, in this round is uh, to the Premier again, but I've got to say, the Premier and his uh, caucus and his cabinet like to call everybody fear mongers. Well, they're nothing but beer mongers, <laughs> Speaker. Yesterday, the Financial Accountability Office tabled their report looking into spending at the Ministry of Health. The Premier insists that spending uh, is on the increase, but when the FAO dove into the numbers, they found something quite different. Perhaps the backbenchers would like to hear exactly what the FAO said in his report. Speaker, and I'll tell you what they note, and I quote, the 2019 budget projects a net spending reduction of $2.7 billion over the next Question. two years. This is in the Ministry of Health. They also note, and I quote, the FAO cannot discuss close the $207 billion reduction by program area, as the province has deemed this information to be a cabinet record. Can the Premier tell us what health services he plans to cut in order to find $2.7 billion and why the Ford government would try to keep that information secret? Stop the clock. Stop the clock. The member for Whitby must come to order. The member for King Vaughan must come to order. The entire government side needs to come to order. The opposition must come to order. Start the clock. Premier to reply. Sure, finance. To the Minister of Finance. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, certainly, we thank the FAO for his report and his confirmation that our government's measured, thoughtful, and responsible path to balance is credible, and the plan laid out in Budget 2019 will put the province on a sustainable footing. Speaker, the title, Protecting What Matters Most, says everything. We're taking a balanced approach to managing the province's finances. 
We're already succeeding the success of our plan. The business community has hired 170,000 people wow. in the province of Ontario. That tells you our plan is working. Wow. We know the opposition does not share our vision. No. Uh, their priorities are to continue to tax more, to spend more and get less, but we will continue our responsible path to balance while providing true and real relief Spons? and protecting what matters most, the people of Ontario. <laughs> Supplementary question. Speaker, for months the Premier has insisted that his cuts don't have any consequences. I think the Finance Minister is trying to tell that same uh, story. The fact is, after yesterday, no one believes them anymore. The Premier can accuse the Financial Ac Accountability Officer of fear-mongering. In fact, they can call him a lefty if they want, but the numbers are in black and white, at least the numbers that the Premier will let us see. Is the Premier willing to do the right thing, Speaker, and reverse the health care cuts, the $2.7 billion that were identified yesterday by the FAO in health care cuts, or is he once again going to deny reality, ignore public outcry, and pretend the cuts just aren't happening? Question's been referred to the Minister of Finance. Well, thank you uh, for the question. Let's be perfectly clear. The budget is fully costed, and all efficiencies and all Opposition value for order. money initiatives are accounted for. So let's talk about what's in black and white. What's in black and white in the health budget is a $1.3 billion increase in the budget, a $384 million increase in hospitals, $267 million increase in long-term uh, in home care, $1.75 billion dollars for 15,000 new long-term care beds, many of which are under construction this very minute. $90 million, Speaker, $90 million for low-income seniors' health care. I can't wait for the NDP to stand up tomorrow and vote in favour of giving $90 million to 100,000 long seniors in need of dental care. I can't wait for that tomorrow. Stop the clock. The member for Essex has to come to order. The member, yes, yes, you. The member for Waterloo has to come to order. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Flamborough, Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Speaker, our government was elected to clean up the fiscal mess left behind by the previous Liberal government. For 15 years, there was reckless spending and promises made on the backs of taxpayers in an attempt to simply stay in power. Last June, the people of Ontario voted for change. They voted to end the wasteful spending of the previous government and to get our fiscal house in order. Speaker, that means we need to make tough decisions, which is what responsible governments do. Can the Premier please explain to this House the actions our government is taking to return to balance while protecting what matters most? Great question. Questions to the Premier. Well, th thank you very much. I want to thank the fabulous, incredible member from Flamborough, uh, Glenbrook. Finally, finally, they have a voice up in Hamilton yeah. rather than, yeah. rather than uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of people that want to spend money up there. Mr. Mr. Speaker, we were elected again on June the 7th to clean up the financial mess of this province that the NDP and the Liberals created, the $347 billion long-term debt left to the children and get grandchildren. Mr. Speaker, you hear him always talking about children and grandchildren. What, are we going to leave them a debt of $347 billion, $13.3 billion uh, dollar, uh, interest every single Opposition year? Matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, Spons. we've been here an hour, it'll cost us a, a million and a half dollars on the interest that the NDP left us. You can't continue on with the socialist mentality that the NDP is probably Thank you. Thank you. The supplementary question. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and back to the Premier. Speaker, when we committed to balancing the books of the government, we also made it clear that we expect our partners to do the same, and we are helping them achieve this. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing previously announced $200 million to small and rural municipalities, and our government has announced over $7 million in funding through the Audit and Accountability Fund to help municipalities find four cents on the dollar in savings. Speaker, can the Premier please speak further to the announcements he made with the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing yesterday to further our work with municipalities to find savings and bring Ontario back to balance? Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I thank the MPP again from Flamborough Glanbrook. Mr. Speaker, I talked to numerous mayors over the last uh, week. Every single one of them every one of them said, yes, we can find savings. They admitted they can find savings, so they admitted that there's waste. They asked for a little bit more time. We sat down we said, okay, we're going to extend the runway a little longer. We're going to support you. We'll give you $7.35 million, any of the large urban mayors. We said to the small municipalities that they've taken advantage of, we'll support you with $200 million because when you find savings, it goes right back into the pockets of the taxpayers. Yep, here, here. And for 15 years, the taxpayers haven't been respected around here, Mr. Speaker. They've been Response. insulted. All they do it constantly is want to tax and spend. Our government doesn't believe in tax and spend. We believe in creating jobs, prosperity, growth, wealth for every single Ontario resident. Thank, exactly Thank you. Thank you. The next question, a member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. One in five children and youth in Ontario will experience a mental health challenge. Yesterday, the Financial Accountability Office published a report that revealed the Conservative government cut $69 million from children and youth mental health program compared to the year before. This is a 15 per cent cut to children's mental health when children and youth are already waiting months too long for mental health resources. Does the Premier believe that these children and their families should fend for themselves because they are not what matters most to his government? Questions to the Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker. We take mental health and addiction seriously. We, we ended up committing $1.9 billion <laughs> to mental health. But you know something, Mr. Speaker? When the federal government supports us, I give them credit. I give the federal government credit to match the $1.9 billion. We put $3.8 billion back into mental health and addiction. We're making sure we go after core services to support people with addictions and mental health. There's no government, no government in this country that has put $3.8 billion into supporting right. mental health. Opposition I have all the confidence order. in the world. I have all the confidence in the world in our Minister of Health. Here, here. She's making sure we are not leaving anyone out. No one at all Response. out. We're going to be making sure we support the people with mental health and addiction. Order. Supplementary question. Back to the Premier. Speaker, the Premier and his government talk a lot about mental health and addictions, but so far what we see are direct cuts to frontline care and services. In fact, the Conservative government failed to match the $174 million federal investment in mental health and addictions funding in Ontario this year, and now they're cutting $69 million from children and youth mental health services. Once again, the government is choosing to balance the budget on the backs of vulnerable children. Will the Premier do the right thing, listen to families seeking help for their children, and reverse the deep cuts made to children and youth mental health program? I recognize again the Premier. Minister of Labour. Referred to the Minister of Labour. Well, Mr. Speaker, we have made historic investments in mental health. To say the opposite is just not accurate. Yesterday alone, legislation was introduced Opposition of foundations for promoting and protecting Mental Health and Addiction Services Act. We are actually following 
But this select committee, what I know a member of the opposition was upon on mental health and addictions in 2010, that is one of the key recommendations was to establish a mental health and addiction centre of excellence with Ontario Health. Investments by the ministries coordinating with community services, that is what the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care is doing. We speak about mental health and addictions and health every Response. day in this legislature. Lisa, you had a private Mr. Mr. Speaker, there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle in getting health right and mental health and addictions right, but we are well on our way to solving that. Stop the clock. I have to ask the member for Parkdale High Park to come to order, the member for Essex once again to come to order, the Solicitor General to come to order. The member for Waterloo once again, please come to order. Okay, the next question, start the clock. The member for Guelph. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Last week, a report came out showing that the clean tech sector generates $35 billion of investment in 2017, representing 3% of Canada's GDP. Ontario is home to 39% of this GDP growth, generating 138,460 jobs. Yet your government seems to determined to shut the door to these jobs. To date, the government has ripped up contracts for clean energy, cancelled retrofit programs helping people save money by saving energy, and now you are cutting programs that support job creation and innovation in clean tech. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier stop attacking innovators in clean tech job creators Question. by reversing cuts to Communitech, Mars, and other innovation programs that are creating Ontario jobs and helping gr grow clean tech businesses? Thank you. And again, remind members to make their comments through the chair. Questions to the Premier. Minister of Economic Development. Referred to the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we, as the new government here in Ontario, have had to make a number of very difficult decisions over the last number of months since we've been here. But the one thing that I can tell you is that we're continuing to work with our partners in the clean tech sector. We're certainly working with our partners in the innovation sector. And when it comes to uh, groups like Communitech or Mars, we've worked with them every step of the way. And the one thing that I will say, Mr. Speaker, is that they understand the challenges that our government is facing when it comes to the 15 billion dollar deficit here in Ontario and that everyone is going to have to work together to make sure that we're getting the end result that we all want and that is that Ontario is on a fiscal financial footing because if we are fiscally responsible here in Ontario if we're working with our partners in the innovation and tech sector to ensure that we're getting the outcomes that we want we will continue Response. to see the type of job growth that we have experienced over the last several months mr. speaker hundred and seventy thousand yeah jobs yeah, yeah, have been yeah. created here in Ontario yeah, across yeah. all sectors, and that's because we're working with our partners. Supplementary question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, given the Premier's response that he received at a recent international tech conference, I would suggest that the minister work a little more closely with the tech sector. Any good economic strategist will tell you that you need to skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. Ontario is well positioned to be a global leader in the fast growing clean tech sector if we support the sector, Mr. Pre Mr. Speaker. Supporting young people in the tech sector is key to our success, um, and, and it will also help tackle the high youth unemployment rate of 12 per cent. So, Mr. Speaker, if the Premier is not going to restore cuts to Communitech and Mars and other innovation hubs, will the government at least restore the youth job link and the employment Question. youth talent incentive that was helping tech businesses hire young people to give them the help and the hands-on job experience to succeed? Questions been referred to the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Training. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Speaker. I can tell you that we've been meeting with people who are working in the tech sector right now 
Ontario is exploding, bursting at the seams when it comes to our tech sector jobs, Mr. Speaker, whether it's at Canada North, and I had the opportunity there where they're serious about tech with our Minister of Tour uh, Training Colleges and University, or this morning I was at a digital media creator, Mr. Speaker, where they're making video games that are being uh, spread all around the world, Mr. Speaker, 65 jobs right now at the company that I was at this morning, headed for 250 jobs in the next couple of years. And you know why they're expanding, Mr. Speaker? They're expanding because the government has tax incentives in certain areas, but we're also creating an environment where they can be successful yeah, yeah. by reducing red tape, working with my colleague here, the Minister of Government Response. and Consumer Services, to make sure that we're changing procurement yeah. in Ontario so that we can be extremely successful and continue to see the type of grob joke in the tech sector that we want to see. Thank you very much. Stop the clock. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. In Budget 2019, our government committed to protecting what matters most, and that includes protecting our environment and our natural resources. Invasive species cost Ontario taxpayers billions of dollars every year. In fact, Recent studies estimated the impact of invasive species in Ontario at 3.6 billion with a B, Mr. Speaker, dollars every year. Our Made in Ontario Environment Plan recognizes these impacts and is committed with working with partners to combat, prevent, detect, and respond to invasive species. Mr. Speaker, could the minister please update our house on the recent announcement where our government committed to supporting the important work done by the Invasive Species Centre? in my riding of Sault Ste. Marie. Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. So thank you very much, Speaker, and I want to thank the great member from Sault Ste. Marie for that question. I also want to thank him for making the funding announcement on behalf of our government for the people. We know that we must continue to work together on all fronts to identify and respond to the threat of invasive species. The Invasive Species Centers Center is a leader in invasive species science, education, and action and we believe that they are in the best position to protect our ecosystems province-wide. Our government recognizes the important work the Invasive Species Centre does through research and on-the-ground actions to prevent the introduction and spread of invasive species, and we are pleased to announce that we will be investing $850,000 to support their continued efforts. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Minister for that great answer. The Invasive Species Centre does vital work, and people across Ontario know that invasive species pose a real and active threat to Ontario's lands, lakes, rivers, and our economy. Since 2011, when the Invasive Species Centre was formed as a strategic initiative of the Ontario and the federal governments, it has served as a unique example of partnership and as a hub for collaboration. By bringing together governments, industry, Indigenous communities, and academia, the Invasive Species Centre plays a leading role in coordinating our efforts to fight invasive species in Ontario. Could the minister please elaborate on how much invasive species cost the people of Ontario and what our government is focused on as we continue to combat their spread? I'd like to know that. Minister. Well, speaker, thanks again to the member for the question. And perhaps no one knows the cost of invasive species better than Bob Lamb, president of the Invasive Species Center Board of Directors, who had this to say about our government's announcement. And I quote, the Made in Ontario Environmental Plan, Environment Plan recognized that preventing invasive species is the single most effective and least costly method to manage invasive species. In fact, for every dollar spent on coordinated multi-jurisdictional prevention activities, three dollars in mitigation, regulatory and depletion costs can be avoided if only one such pest is prevented from establishing. 
The Invasive Species Centre is committed to working together to find efficiencies in the fight against invasive species and thanks the Government of Ontario for its support and commitment Response. to protecting our natural spaces and economy. I think Bob's got it right. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is for the Premier. Speaker, following a massive public backlash against the Premier's cuts to municipalities, he's decided to give them a bit more runway. Runway, I think was the word used, before bringing down the axe on childcare, ambulance services, and public health. But when it comes to our schools, the runway to adapt to this government's massive education cuts is getting shorter every day. These cuts will hit students hard this fall as they return to larger classes and fewer course options and less time with teachers and other education workers. Speaker, school boards are finalizing their budgets right now. It is not too late for the Premier to do the right thing. Will he reverse his cuts to our schools? The question is in place of the Premier. Minister of Education. This is the Minister of Education. Thank you very much. And Speaker, I'd like to start off by saying perhaps the member opposite missed the memo. We're actually increasing yep. spending in education ah. by the tune of $700 million. And again, we are getting education back on track because we inherited a system that was absolutely broken and failing our students. So we need to take steps to, in terms of getting it back on track. And let me tell you, we're working with our school boards. And I'm pleased to say when I was in Northern Ontario last week, the school board, the Kuwaitin, oh, sorry, Saul, Kuwaitin Patricia School Board actually indicated to me that they will be able to find 4%. Other school boards boards across this province are keeping their head down and working with us and identifying ways to achieve efficiencies. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we are working on introducing an opportunity for school boards to work with us. Response. We've invited them to come forward and say, yeah, we would like to take uh, participate in the audit and accountability exercise that you're working through because surely school boards across this province can find four Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary question. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and back to the Premier. I, I got to ask you, what does this government have against kids? Cutting $69 million from children's mental health, slashing our classrooms. And I'm happy to brief the minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, on how her budget is shortchanging our kids. Every single day, more teachers and education workers are being handed pink slips. This government knows it. We know it. Families know it. Students know it. I heard firsthand Order. last week from parents and teachers in North Bay and the Minister of Finance's own riding where half of all secondary teachers in a single board stand to be lost, along with Order. 62 in elementary schools. 62. Speaker, as we sit here, Government students side, are being forced to reset for their come courses. Right. It's causing enormous anxiety, Mr. Speaker, and the programs that help our most vulnerable students are at risk. Will the Premier take a second look and change course before it is too late? Minister of Education. Do you know what, You're Speaker? Right. I have to tell you, I absolutely reject all the dramatic preposterous nonsense that's coming from that member opposite. All the drama that she's trying to create, sincerely, I say to her, it has no merit whatsoever. When we go across the province, uh, the member from Niagara West actually shared with me that no teachers are losing their jobs. You know, the, it, as we go school board to Order. school board, we are going to get it right, and we're working with our partners. And you know, let's talk about our budget. You know, our plan and education that works for you is absolutely gearing up to make sure that after 15 years of failing our students by the Liberal government under Kathleen Shame. Wynne and oh, Dalton Montgomery, Shame. we're getting things back on track. I met That's with fun. the Teacher Ontario Student people. Trustee Association last Thursday, Friday, excuse me, and they are absolutely on board with making sure that we're engaged and we're preparing students for the job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's considerable noise on both sides of the house.
and it's rising. I'm going to ask the members to come to order. Order. The next question, the member for Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, this government added the transition child benefits to their seemingly endless list of short-sighted cuts. It is a program of last resort that gives families money for food and basic needs. Mr. Speaker, I believe that in this House, we can all agree that children should have food and clothing. They should not be cold and hungry. Meanwhile, the Premier and his government are spending millions on peddling beer in corner stores. So, Speaker, is the Premier okay with having cold and hungry children in Ontario as long as it's easier to buy a beer? The question is to the Premier. I don't even know. Minister of Transportation. Referred to the Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, our government's moving forward with social assistance reforms that will restore dignity, encourage employment, and empower the provinces most vulnerable to get back to a path of self-reliance. The here, here. previous government, which the member opposite was a member of, uh, had a patchwork of benefits and support programs forced, that forced families to spread precious time searching for relevant resources through multiple offices. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to helping families by simplifying the complicated and unequal supports. The Ontario Child Benefit provides families equal access to government support for those who file their taxes. That's why we're increasing our investment in the Ontario Child Benefit by $31 million for a total of roughly $1.2 billion this year. This will be a slow, there will be a slow and gradual wind down of the transitional child benefit and recipients will be notified directly Response. well in advance of the implementation date. Mr. Speaker, we're dealing with the record deficit and debt that that member opposite was a part of that devastated our services yeah. in Ontario and we're protecting what matters most. Thank you. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I certainly would have appreciated the Premier answering, answering the question about his importance for children or beer in Ontario. And I think so far what I've heard time and time from this government is the importance of beer all across Ontario. I'll remind this government also of last year's decision to slap our Franco-Ontarian community side, in the order. face by cutting the French Language Services Commissioner and abandoning the Francophone University. Franco-Ontarians and Francophiles, we are a community, important community, and we have like a bilingualism. The Premier has made a choice to spend up to a billion dollars a billion dollars to sell beer in corner stores. Why is Question. selling beer more important to him than the Francophone Ontarians? Okay, I'm going to ask the member for Kitchener Conestoga once again to come to order. The member for Markham Stouffville must come to order. Minister of Transportation can reply. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker, for that question. But I can tell the member opposite on this side of the House. We're determined to sit four years straight and serve the people of Ontario who elected us last June 7th. Not run off and try to join another party, which is down destined in the polls and de highly doubtful that they're actually going to retain power, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, let us be straight. This, that member opposite, part of that government, $15 billion deficit, over $300 billion debt. $1 billion a month is servicing that debt. Over $13 billion a year goes to service the interest on that debt. Could you imagine what we could do for services across this province if we weren't servicing that debt with $13 million, Mr. Speaker? It's unheard of of what that government, that member did to this province of Ontario, and I hopefully she's not going to join her comrades up in, up in the federal Spons? government and do what they did to Ontario, Mr. Speaker. The House will come to order.
start the clock. The next question, the member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the fantastic Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Yay. Mr. Speaker, employers and job seekers in my riding of Carleton are frustrated about the skills gap that is preventing young people from finding work and employers from finding the workers with the right skills. And the previous employment services system inherited from the Liberals was complex. And Mr. Speaker, it did not produce results for job seekers, employers, or taxpayers in Carleton or across the province. And I know that it is a priority of our government to address the skills gap and connect our young people with high quality, well paying jobs in sectors that are in high demand. Through you, Mr. Speaker, can the minister please tell us how our government is transforming our employment programs to ensure? that Ontarians in Carleton and across the province are prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. And, and, and thank you to the member from Carleton uh, for her very hard work. Uh, she's an amazing MPP. And, uh, speaker, our government is transforming employment services so that they are innovative, responsive, and create good local solutions. The previous Liberal government, supported by the NDP, did not deliver for job seekers, for employers, or for Ontario's economy. We are modernizing our employment services system by creating a new model that integrates social assistance employment services into Employment Ontario to help the provinces most vulnerable, including those with disabilities, to break free of the poverty cycle. Our government has promised the people of Ontario Response. to create good jobs and make Ontario open for business, and that is exactly what we are doing. Yeah. Thank you, Speaker. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for her hard work for job seekers in Ontario and getting this province back on track. It is so important that we ensure our employment programs are responsive to the needs of the job market so that job seekers in Carleton and across the province can actually find good jobs while taxpayer dollars are respected. There's an urgent need, Mr. Speaker, to connect Ontarians with job opportunities that will lead to a prosperous career, and the previous employment services system failed to do that. And that's why I'm so pleased to see that our government has a strong plan to refocus our employment programs in a way that will benefit all Ontarians and help make Ontario open for business and open for jobs. And through you, Mr. Speaker, can the minister tell us more about how our government is supporting employment programs that are adaptive and forward-thinking? Good question. Minister. And thank you again to the member for her question. Speaker, not only are we improving service delivery of employment programs in Ontario, we are also investing in innovative technologies that will support job creation. I am proud that the member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, was able to represent the government in Brockville last week to announce that our government is providing more than $1.4 million to help create a cutting-edge career exploration tool for jobs in the steel and aluminum industries. The Brockville-based Employment and Education Centre will lead a project to develop virtual reality software and work closely with regional employers to create virtual career exploration modules, allowing job seekers to learn about about career opportunities Response. in a dynamic and interactive digital environment. The VR modules can later be used by employment service providers all over the province, ensuring Ontario is open for business and open for jobs. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next question, the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Um, after a huge backlash, the Premier and his Conservative government were forced to back down on their deep cuts to municipalities and the services families rely on, like public health and childcare. While this is good news, we all know that the cuts aren't going to stop. Last week, the Financial Accountability Office's analysis found that the Premier's reckless drive to balance the budget, no matter the cost, will require another $6 billion in cuts to programs and services over the next three years. 
So having been forced to back down on cuts to public health, child care and ambulance services, Mr. Speaker, my question is, where does the Premier plan to cut next? The question is to the Premier. Minister of Finance. Referred to the Minister of Finance. Thank you very much for the question. And again, we uh, thank the Financial Accountability Officer for confirming that our government's measured, thoughtful, and responsible path to balance shows that it is a credi credible plan that was laid out in Budget 2019. It puts the government on a sustainable financial footing. We need to acknowledge in this legislature, yet again, Speaker, that the previous government was spending $40 million a day more than they took in, and that is absolutely unsustainable. And, Speaker, we told the municipalities, the agencies, the boards and commissions that we will look for four cents on every dollar. And, in fact, we have found almost eight cents on every dollar spent. And all that, Speaker, while returning, Speaker, we will return $26 billion of that back to every family, individual, senior and business in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you. Well, I, I imagine that we read a different report, because uh, I don't know that that's what that report said at all. And I would just have to say that this falls under the category of fiscal uh, fantasy on the part of the minister. So by ca cancelling cap and trade, offering tax cuts to the rich, and now risking a multi-million dollar lawsuit from the beer store. The Conservatives have created more instability and uncertainty, Order. and the Moody's Credit Rating Agency responded to the Premier's mismanagement by downgrading Ontario's credit rating. Order. Now, not only is this government's mismanagement undermining our economy, it is hurting our families. So far, this government has attacked children, Order. people living with disabilities, seniors, Franco-Ontarians, Indigenous people, and everyday families with his callous cuts. So I again ask, Mr. Speaker, who Question. will this government target next? The Minister of Finance. Well, thank you. I, I realize that uh, the member may have missed many items in the budget had she actually read the 383 pages because it talks about the fact of our low-income uh, individual and family tax credit returning $2 billion to the lowest income earners in the province of Ontario. She may have missed the memo where we're giving 300 thousand families an opportunity to have up to 75 percent of their child care paid for two billion dollar investment speaker we are offering the business community the accelerated capital cost which allows them to write their equipment off earlier they've done that and they've created hundred and seventy thousand jobs speaker I don't know what part of this the member doesn't get, but it's $26 billion that's being returned to families in Ontario. And again, I can't wait for you to stand up and vote in favour of giving. Thank you. Thank you. Order. The next question, the member for Kitchener Conestoga. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. We all know our government is committed to making a big difference for our communities in the north. After 15 years of neglect, we promise to step up for the people of Northern Ontario. The Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation is one of the tools we are using to deliver on that promise. It was created by a former PC government, and we are continuing its legacy by making strategic investments throughout the North. Not only are we creating jobs, but we are also protecting the cornerstones of Northern communities by supporting the work they do. Can the minister please expand on other initiatives we are taking to support the people of Northern Ontario? Mr. Energy, Northern Development and Mining, and Indigenous Affairs. I want to thank Matthew McCandless, the Executive Director of the IISD Experimental Lakes Area, Dr. Michael Patterson and the Asper family, in particular my friend Gail Asper, Todd Sellers, a good friend of mine and President of Lake of the Woods Sustainable Foundation, for understanding the vision that we had, Mr. Speaker. When I first announced a fish uh, biological studies place at the ELA, of course, we found a place in deterioration hardly could be called uh, world class. Mr. Speaker, by investing in a partnership with IISD, we've elevated this to the world class facility it is, Mr. Speaker. We now have hundreds of students from high schools across Ontario coming there. Top flight universities, 
Lake had my alma mater, McGill University, doing important work there, Mr. Speaker. We thank you for them for our collective es efforts, and I announced the, the plans uh, for a training centre there where students from high school and Response. university will be able to learn once and for all and finally the great things that we do in there now. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you, uh, thank you to the minister for the hard work he continues to do for the people all across northern Ontario. The International Institute for Sustainable Development Experimental Lakes Area is a unique, world-class organization recognized globally as a leader in quality science and research that helps us to protect our water systems. The scientific work being done here helps inform sound policy decisions that benefit not only Ontario, but also Canada and countries around the world. I know the minister is very proud to have such a world-class facility at home in Northern Ontario. Mr. Speaker, could the minister also update the House on the additional resources that our government for the people is investing in the Experimental Lakes area to support their important work being done at the facility? The Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. Minister of Natural Resources. Referred to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forests. I want to thank the minister for that but I also want to thank my colleague, uh, Minister Rickford, for the tremendous work he has done on this file and his commitment to the Experimental Lakes area throughout his entire political career. Our government is putting people first by working to ensure we can continue to enjoy and benefit from our freshwater ecosystems. We recognize how fortunate we are to be home to many lakes, rivers and streams that provide recreational and tourism opportunities and significant contributions to our economy. That's why our government, our government will be investing up to $2 million in 2019-20 to ensure the continuity of ongoing multi-year research projects and important long-term monitoring of the, of the Experimental Lakes area. This investment will help deliver on our commitment to ensuring clean waterways and drinking water, which are integral to Ontario's economic stability and well-being, and I thank the Minister of Northern Response. Development for continuing to make sure that we understood how important this was. The next question, the member for Niagara Centre. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Ontario is experiencing stronger and more frequent floods as a result of the climate crisis. Ten communities are in a state of emergency. When asked about these devastating floods, the Premier said, quote, something is going on and we have to be conscious of it. Yet this Premier has slashed the Conservation Authority funding for flood management by 50 per cent. We know this government does not take the climate crisis seriously, but they could at least provide the funding necessary to help Ontario families deal with flooding emergencies. Can the Premier explain why, amidst a time of record floods, he is gutting flood management programs? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Natural Resources. Refer to the Minister of Natural Resources. Well, thank you very much, Speaker, and I want to thank uh, the member opposite uh, for the question. And I don't think I need to remind him that our government inherited a $15 billion deficit from the previous Liberal government that your party supported 98 per cent of the time. So you wear some of that as well. And we made it clear Opposition that things order. were going to change. And what we have said to conservation Opposition authorities across the province of Ontario is that they need to concentrate on what— The opposition must come to order. I apologize to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Please conclude your response. They need to concentrate on what their original mandate was, not the mandate creep that they've created for themselves over the many, many years. And we have said to them, we are cutting your funding, which amounts to, across the board, on average, about 8 per cent of a conservation authority's funding, in some, in some conservation authorities, Spons. less than 2 per cent. We have said to them, you need to concentrate on your core mandate of flood management, flood forecasting, to ensure that Ontario— Thank you. Supplementary question. Speaker, Speaker this government continues to lurch from one short-sighted policy to another, leaving a fiscal mess behind them. The August flooding in Toronto caused $80 million in damage. Storms and floods in February of last year caused more than $57 million in damage across southern Ontario and Quebec. Floods that happened once every 100 years are now happening once every few years. Municipalities and families cannot cope with these costs. 
The programs used to mitigate damage are cut, and the programs used to assist people and municipalities in repairing after a devastating flood are cumbersome and difficult to access. Can the Premier explain to the people of Ontario why he is cutting flood management when the people of Ontario need it most? Minister to reply. Well, I thank the, uh, the member for that uh, supplemental question, uh, Speaker, and I do remind him again of the fiscal mess that we, were, we inherited from the previous Liberal government. As I said, we have said to conservation authorities, stick to your mandate, stick to what you've been, you were designed to do. But I also want to point out, Speaker, that my ministry continues to wa monitor water levels all across this province. Our Surface Water Monitoring Centre that headquarters in Peterborough has mon is monitors water levels all across the province. I also want to say, while I have the opportunity, Speaker, how our hearts have gone out and to the people who have suffered by floods this year, and I want to thank the Premier for instituting a internal task force that has had three meetings, regional meetings across the province now to sit down with people, and we will have public meetings further, to sit down with people to understand the effects that those floods has on people. Order. I can tell you, my colleague, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, and Alvin, the, the DREO program is there for the people of Ontario. We have their backs. That's one thing you can count on the people of Ontario. This government has your back. Thank you. The next question, the member from Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the amazing Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sports. Amazing. Speaker, I was delighted to hear the Minister launch a call to develop and revitalize Ontario's place earlier this morning. I know many of the members in this House, along with countless other Ontarians, have fond memories of Ontario Place. I'm glad to hear the government is taking action to revitalize this important attraction. In doing so, we're sending a clear message. Ontario is open for business. Here, here. Speaker, the former Liberal government failed to prioritize Ontario's place and let it fall to disrepair. They did not value the full potential of this incredible, unique water site, uh, waterfront site. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please explain and call for the development process which will seek to transform Ontario Place into a world-class, year-round destination? The question is to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member from Mississauga Lakeshore for the question and for the great work he does for the people of Mississauga Lakeshore. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, today I was at Ontario Place with the Minister and my good friend and colleague, the Minister of Infrastructure, to announce the next steps our government is taking to redevelop Ontario Place into the world-class destination it was originally envisioned to be. We are beginning a worldwide search, Mr. Speaker, to find a partner or partners with the best and most innovative ideas that will bring our vision for Ontario Place to life. Nous avons soutenu le projet de notre gouvernement de uh, it is our intention to create a spectacular destination, uh, a world-class destination that will bring visitors from the entire world. Uh, we are beginning a worldwide search to find this partner, Mr. Speaker, and the process is designed to provide as much flexibility as possible for interested parties. Thank you very much. Supplementary question. Through you, Speaker. Thank you to the Minister for your response. It is refreshing to see that so much of this untapped potential of Ontario Place will finally be utilized so that the space can be enjoyed by new generations of Ontarians along with other tourists from outside Ontario. Mr. Speaker, we saw a process earlier in this year inviting interested pro uh, proponents to su submit their ideas for future of this site. Can the minister please inform this House of what exactly has changed with respect to this proposal? Here, here. Good minister to reply. Through you, Mr. Speaker, the announcement today set out the formal process for organizations or consortia teams to submit formal proposals for the site. We also made it clear today that proposals, including a casino, will not be considered, and I will confirm in the House today and to all members that there will be no casinos at Ontario Place. I'm also excited to see the best proposals that can come forward from around the world. 
Nous souhaitons voir des concepts de développement répondants. Okay. We uh, will be uh, subjecting these uh, proposals to uh, rigorous uh, criteria uh, for respect for our heritage and uh, uh, for uh, res uh, respecting our future. When the Honourable Minister of Trade and Development at the time Ontario's, Ontario Place is open, he said that Ontario Place will be the world's most exciting island. Response. Mr. Speaker, we look forward to seeing that the new Ontario Place will be the world's most exciting island once again. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our question period for this morning. Government House leaders inform me he has a point of order. Just a quick point of order, uh, Mr. Speaker. A key strategist in our legislative unit is turning 61 today. Happy birthday to Richard Heimpel. <laughs> Member for Scar Scarborough Agent Court on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, today marks the 101st anniversary of the independence of the First Republic of Armenia. The Armenian community in Toronto, Ontario, and the entire Canada are celebrating this milestone. And today, the Armenian community of the GTA, they will be here for the flag raising. And after that, there will be a reception between 4 and 6.30 tonight at room 4, uh, 2.47. Everyone is welcome to join them. Thank you. We have a deferred vote on the amendment to Government Notice of Motion No. 62 relating to the allocation of time on Bill 108, an act to amend various statutes with respect to housing, other development, and various other matters. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
Going to ask the members to please take their seats. On May the 27th, 2019, Mr. Bissau moved an amendment to Government Notice of Motion No. 62 relating to the allocation of time on Bill 108. All those in favour of Mr. Bichon's motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Bichon. Mr. Bichon. <laughs> Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Ms. Singh Brampton Centre. Singh Brampton Centre. Mr. Vanton. Mr. Vanton. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sat. Ms. Sat. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Shamanta. Ms. Shamanta. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Stiles. Ms. Stiles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosa. Mr. Rakosa. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame De Rosier. Madame De Rosier. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. All those opposed to Monsieur Bisson's motion, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Smith Bay of Mr. Smith Bay of Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Mulrooney. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Tobolo. Mr. Tobolo. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipees. Mr. Pettipees. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho. Mr. Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Ms. Sermon. Ms. Sermon. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Miss Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Ostrov. Mr. Ostrov. Ms. Midas. Ms. Midas. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. And Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Ms. Kanjan. Ms. Kanjan. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Corthor. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Corthor. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Mr. Gazzetto. Mr. Gazzetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Canapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babb. Mr. Babb. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanny Gasly. Mr. Tanny Gasly. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. The ayes are 42, the nays are 65. The ayes being 42 and the nays being 65, I declare the motion lost. Are the members ready to vote on the main motion? Yes. yes. We will now vote on the main motion. Mr. Walker has moved Government Notice of Motion number 62 relating to allocation of time on Bill 108, an act to amend various statutes with respect to housing, other development, and various other matters. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? Yes. Heard some notes. All those in favour of the motion will please say aye. aye. All those opposed will please say nay. Yes. In my opinion, the ayes have it. Yes. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute vote.
Walker has moved government notice of motion number 62 relating to allocation of time on Bill 108. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be counted by the clerk. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith Bay Quincy. Mr. Smith Bay Quincy. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Bethan Fall. Mr. Bethan Fall. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Yuri. Mr. Yuri. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Mulrooney. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalan. Mr. Kalan. Ms. Sermon. Ms. Sermon. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Trantafilopoulos. Mr. Trantafilopoulos. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Ostrom. Mr. Ostrom. Ms. Midas. Ms. Midas. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Romano. Mr. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Cawartha. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Cawartha. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Baver. Mr. Baver. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanny Gasol. Mr. Tanny Gasol. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Monsieur Bisson. Monsieur Bisson. Madame Jelen. Madame Jelen. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Carpoche. Ms. Shermanta. Ms. Shermanta. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Borgwen. Mr. Borgwen. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. The ayes are 66, the nays are 42. The ayes being 66 and the nays being 42, I declare the motion carried. There being no further business this morning, this House stands in recess until 3 p.m.